Today, I made a travel mug. So I wanted to make something that I could put in the dishwasher. So I went around to some of the discount stores and found this one in the Christmas tree shop. And it has a screw on the bottom and I could take this sleeve off. So I made my own. Let me show you how I did it. I started this project by ripping teak strips to 1 8 of an inch thick and mitered maple wedges to 22 and a half degree angles. Every time I had to adjust my fence, I used a cutoff as a gauge. With all the teak strips cut, I clamped a stop block to my fence and cross cut all the pieces to 3 inches. Here I'm using a slide joint to ensure that each piece has an equal amount of glue on them. I glued up all the pieces as half rings so I only had to worry about two surfaces being absolutely parallel and then I used a disc sander to correct them. I glued and clamped them and let them sit overnight to dry. The maple antique pieces needed to be flattened, so I hot glued the rings to a sled and ran them through a thickness planer. I drew a wedge diagram on a piece of wood and drew a circle on each segment, then sanded each piece to the line. To finish leveling all the segments, I hot glued the pieces to plywood and used a router with my slab leveling jig. On wax paper, I glued all the segments together making sure all the pieces were covered with glue. I capped the ends with teak segments and used bowl blanks to press the pieces together. I did add extra segments and pine blocks. I used an awl to make indents on each end and mounted it on the lathe. With my face shield in place, I started to round out the blank with a large spindle roughing gouge and then followed up with a carbide cutter. Once the blank was rounded, I used a parting tool to make a tenon on the bottom. Then I attached a piece to my Nova Chuck. I slow the lathe speed down to 600 RPMs and start coring out the piece with drill bits ranging in size from half inch to one inch. Then I installed a homemade steady rest and finished coring with Forstner bits. Once I finished with the Forstner bits, I raised the speed of the lathe and finished with my carbide cutter. I used a block of wood and the tailstock to hold everything together and shape the piece with the skew. I sanded it with 220 and 400 grit sandpaper and used mineral spirits to clean off any dust. I finished the mug with five coats of friction polish, which is equal parts of denatured alcohol, boiled linseed oil, and shellac. I made a cone-shaped block and placed the mug over it and snugged it up with the tailstock. Then I used a parting tool to turn down the block. Everything was going fine, but before I knew it, the mug was flying off the lathe. The bottom had a hole in it and the rim was shattered, but the piece was intact. So I cleaned up the broken rim and glued a new piece onto the top. I used a block of wood and the tailstock as a clamp and let it dry overnight. Not taking any chances, I installed my steady rest and cored out the top of the mug. I reversed the mug and cleaned up the bottom. Then I reversed it one more time and shaped the upper rim with a detailing tool. I checked the fit and sanded it with 220 and 400 grit sandpaper. Once the top was done, I made a new segmented piece for the bottom. I test fit the piece with the screw and everything fit. I applied glue and used the screw to hold it in place. Just to be sure, I mounted the whole piece on the lathe and used the tailstock as a clamp, leaving the piece to dry overnight. I sanded it flush with 400 grit sandpaper and removed any dust with mineral spirits. Then I applied five coats of white bomb poly. The project was finally done. If you enjoyed this project and want to see more projects like it, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.